very preliminary look at riddles and riddling in Gisamjanga Datoga. I'll just start off with a Gisamjanga Datoga riddle, which is Gidi Digga's mother says ding ding. And the answer is Ramajid, a milking calabash. So another idiophonic uh, example of a riddle, I think. Um, okay, so as far as I know, there's nothing published on riddles in any variety of Datoga. As for what already exists out there, archival materials, um, Richard has sent me some, some recordings relating to riddles from Asanjig Datoga, a different variety, which I haven't yet had time to, to look at. And I'm not sure if the Burger Corpus has any riddles, um, Holland will be able to enlighten us there. It's quite possible that Datoga speakers have collected their own riddles, um, which would be interesting to find out. So as yet, there's not much available. Um, my own collection is based on a single recording. I, I mean, all of you have already talked about how riddles are really disappearing as a genre. And I had never encountered riddles spontaneously in any of my field work with the Togus because it never even occurred to me as something that I would research. But um, Herman Malek, who's my kind of research coordinator, um, I suppose, general organizer of my life in Tanzania, suggested that we put together or we organize a, a, a session in which people would tell riddles and sing songs. So that's what we did um, in 2014 in a village outside of Haidum. Um, it's, a, it's a recording of about an hour and a half. Most of it is singing and, and um, yeah, songs and some tongue twisters. But the first 12 minutes is riddles. Um, and it's, I should say it's a very staged performance. So we asked um, an extended household to come together one evening and, and produce this riddle session. Um, it was also a slightly atypical group of participants. So the extended family, of course, knew each other very well, but there were also some additional um, Datoga who came along because they thought it would be fun. So, and plus me, of course. So it was a, it was a little bit uh, odd, I guess, in that respect. Total, it was four men, eight women, me, and only one older child, as far as I remember. So there weren't that many children present. And over the course of this session, um, there are 35 riddles, and then Holland also added two. So we have a very small sample for Datoga, um, although I'm sure we could collect more. This is a screenshot from the video. As you can see, it was very, very dark. So there's not much we can say about bodily communication in riddle sessions. However, if I maximize the brightness, you can see there, there were more people there than it appears uh, with, my <laughs> with my solar lamp. All right, so, um, so the riddle format or sequence in the toga looks roughly like this. So you start, uh, your opening is Damwadya, which means riddle. Um, and often you also identify your addressee with the person's name. The response is Qadyam. Um, not totally sure what that means. In other contexts, it means dry, but I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, then, then comes the riddle itself and the solution, if the person knows the solution, and then you go around again for as long as uh, the speaker can think of riddles, basically. If you don't know the answer, then you communicate that some way. You either say, I don't know, or we'll see some examples in a second, or you can say, Adaida duk, or Awasa duk, take my cattle away. Um, and so the, the punishment in Datoga is, is cattle, of course. Um, and the Riddler will then say something like, um, and then the answer, I've stolen them. Why didn't you say blah? So you always find out the answer um, to the riddle. So that's the basic format. Um, I'm just gonna play you an example of a snippet from the recording. This is between a mother-in-law and her daughter-in-law. Um, and I've kind of coded the, the different parts of the, the riddle sequence on the right hand side. Okay. 
Okay, so just a few things to point out. Um, I included the pause duration, the, the, the length of the silence is there, because I think it's quite interesting to look at how quick the, the back and forth is. Sometimes it's very, very fast. It's less than half a second. Other times there's a bit of a, a lag while the person is trying to remember the riddle, and that sometimes brings about uh, laughter. In terms of the turn taking, it's very dyadic in this particular context. So it's just one riddler, one answerer. But if the respondent doesn't know the answer, then someone else can jump in. And the single addressee is always identified by name um, at the beginning of the session. And one thing I noticed also is that people were encouraging, for example, the daughter-in-law to riddle her father-in-law. Um, and then you have this specific expression like hit this person, ask that person a riddle. Um, I think one thing that's very apparent from um, what everyone's been saying, but also from that recording is the, the entertainment quality, right? There's this strong effective component. Um, there was lots of laughter and, and people were amused. And also um, people showed jocular frustration. So they would pretend they were annoyed if they didn't know the answer or if the other person got it right. So. Uh, in line eight from the previous example, um, when the daughter-in-law knew the answer straight away, her mother-in-law responds, ah, like, I'm annoyed that you knew, and then carries on. Um, here's another example. So an old woman poses a riddle um, to her nephew, um, which is an interesting one, just means that one, that one. And he doesn't know the answer, and he says, ah, ha, ha, and he like, uh, he curses basically. So it's an interjection of, of, that's often used for frustration. Um, so there was very kind of dynamic, lively environment in which people were uh, <laughs> exclaiming a lot of the time. One other really interesting thing about this particular riddle session, maybe because it was so staged, was that there was some spontaneous meta commentary that arose about riddles. So I didn't ask any questions at all about riddling, um, but nonetheless, you do get some interesting comments. So there's one from, an, from the oldest woman in the group who just spontaneously said, the riddle of today and the one of the past are not the same, which would be something to, to follow up on. And then the same young man who couldn't answer the, the question in my previous example, he was asked something else. And he said, um, damn, didn't I used to know this? Again, frustrated. The oldest woman asks, well, what happened to you? And then his mother responds, didn't he lose them or didn't he lose it in Haydam? Which I think is quite interesting. So they make this explicit connection between a place and presumably associated uh, a certain lifestyle and this loss of riddle knowledge. Um, just very quickly, some uh, comments, observations about the riddle forms and the imagery. Um, so we obviously don't really have enough examples of Datoga yet to do anything too systematic, but in terms of the objects, nothing new here. We've got body parts, human and animal, cattle, animals, calabashes, clothing, jewelry, parts of the house. Um, sentence types, the declaratives, the most common, I think, some imperatives, which is quite interesting. And then one interrogative. Um, so who is the most, who is the most important or senior in this world? Any ideas? <laughs> The uh, tobacco or honey beer is the correct answer. Uh, syntax, you get clauses as well as single noun phrases. So quite, quite simple, the Datoga, the Datoga riddle is quite short. And then I also just wanted to point to two examples exhibiting the kind of semantic and sy syntactic parallelism that Martin described for Iraq, because it's quite, quite similar. So I have two examples here. Um, the first one, dew hits it, the rain doesn't hit it. So you've got this semantic oppo opposition of hitting, not hitting. And then you also have the, the kind of structural parallelism there. Um, and another example, full at night, hungry in the afternoon. Again, this semantic opposition between full and, and hungry. Uh, and then also the, the structural parallelism too. So those are quite um, similar to, to some of what Martin was describing for Iraq, although the, there weren't that many examples of, of those kinds of forms. Um, just because you'll be curious what the answer is. So one is uh, a calf's tongue and the second one is uh, the gate. So that was what I had to tell you uh, <laughs> about the toga riddles.